If you're going the route of CCNP and you're considering checking out the network automation stuff, the in-auto exam is one that you're going to want to pay attention to. So in this video, we'll break down what that exam is really all about and some hidden bonuses that may come from taking this exam. Let's go. Cisco's new certification platform is really cool and it's very similar in a lot of ways to the Microsoft certification platform. Now you take a core exam and then basically an elective, a specialist exam, and that's what will grant you your CCNP. The same goes for the DevNet professional. There is a DevNet core exam and then a series of specialist exams you can pick one from, and that's what will get you your DevNet professional exam. But did you know that there is one of those specialist exams that applies to either one, DevNet or CCNP? That's what the enterprise automation exam, the in-auto, is all about. And in this video, I think we should explore what this exam really does for us and how it differs from some of the other automation offerings that we've seen so far. Immediately what comes to mind is why is this in both platforms? Why is this in both CC and P and DevNet? Doesn't it seem like the DevNet exam already covers automation? Did they need an enterprise automation exam? Well, let's talk about this for a second. The DevNet associate and the Dev DevNet Core, those have heavier weights, if you look at the exam outlines, in the software development section, and less heavier weights in the actual Cisco platform automation section. That's where the in-auto flips things around, so what I think we should do now is bring up the white paper on what the exam breakdown is and talk about it. So here it is, the in-auto exam topics, and again, just to reiterate, if you take this exam, you will be given an Enterprise Automation Specialist title or certification if you haven't already taken one of the core exams. So simply taking this exam will get you the Enterprise Automation Specialist certification, and it counts towards both CCNP and DevNet Professional. So once you've taken the in-auto exam, you can either take the on-core exam or the dev core exam and be granted the professional level certifications in either of those roles. But again, I think it's important that we break down what this exam really covers and how it differentiates itself from some of the other automation stuff that we've seen up till this point. If I'm focusing on one thing that really separates itself, it's these percentages right here. Domain one, network programmability foundations and domain two, automate APIs and protocols. These carried heavier weights in other parts of the exams that we've seen. These things are covered somewhat in Encore, somewhat in the CCNA, and a lot in the DevNet Associate, and they carried heavier weights. But in this exam, these two domains total for only 20% of the exam, and the remaining 80% are all about automating network devices and Cisco platforms. This is where you're really going to be rolling up your sleeves and automating Cisco devices. They assume that you already have some basic familiarity with APIs, Git, Python virtual environments, a little bit of Ansible, maybe some Puppet. They assume that you know some stuff about Yang and how Yang models fit in and the IETF protocols, NetConf and RESTConf. And that's why they're not putting as much heavy weight on these items. No, what this exam is all about is it's all about automating the enterprise. It's not about software development and best practices. We're rolling up our sleeves and we're doing stuff. So if we take a look at domain three with network device programmability, we're seeing things like day zero provisioning. We're seeing things like configure model driven telemetry for iOS XE devices. If you checked out my YouTube video on streaming, data from a network device into Power BI. That's exactly what this 3.5 is. Except for the 3.5 section, they go a step further where you actually subscribe to events on these devices. They even bring up NetMiko. This is the first mention of NetMiko on a Cisco exam. So we're really doing stuff when we get into domain three. We're using NetMiko. We're using NC client for NetConf interactions. We're monitoring the network for troubleshooting issues and outlier data. We're doing zero touch provisioning. Then we take it a step further, and I think this is probably the most fascinating part, is now we're talking about specific Cisco platforms, DNA Center, SD-WAN, and Meraki, and each of these get 20% of the exam. These three platforms accumulate to 60% of the exam. I think that means they put a lot of emphasis, they really believe that these three platforms are what's going to transform the enterprise. And I love that because these three platforms kind of represent three different kinds 
millions of enterprises, right? The DNA Center is representing a large campus, maybe a hospital, maybe a university. SD-WAN is representing a multi-regional campus, right? Administering a HQ to branch hub spoke architecture is a big deal, and SD-WAN simplifies that greatly. And Meraki, while they've traditionally been for small to medium-sized businesses, they can absolutely handle large enterprises. And in a lot of ways, it simplifies and feels like the summary or best parts of the two above. Let's expand these a little bit and take a look at what's going on in DNA Center, SD-WAN, and Meraki. I think one of the cool things about this is when I was recording for the DevNet Associate exam, I felt strongly that we needed to take it a step further than what the DevNet Associate exam asked us to accomplish. So a lot of these things we've already kind of covered. We know things like what's the difference between traditional versus SDN, but here in 4.2, we start looking at what the features of DNA Center are in these 4.2 A, B, C, and D. This is really talking about the northbound southbound, eastbound, and westbound APIs, something that we covered in our DevNet Associate course on CBT. And then I really like this, implement API requests. This is talking about do it. Do it. Roll up your sleeves and actually connect to the REST API on DNA Center and check out the intent APIs. That is the actual configuring of our stuff. Implement API requests that perform and accomplish network management tasks like device discovery. And then of course there's even some troubleshooting. Who doesn't love troubleshooting? Let's check out some SD-WAN. For the most part, the SD-WAN is really interacting with the vManage API. You see vManage pop up in a lot of places here, but it is talking about how do you configure the SD-WAN fabric? I mean, let's use this stuff to do it. You have to construct the actual API requests themselves to connect to the vManage API. You have to understand how to get started beyond a little bit of a hello world. It's do the hello world, get connected, and then do stuff. Monitor your APIs, configure your API items. And then of course, a little more troubleshooting again. Then down in Meraki, Meraki has a few different APIs that I think are kind of fascinating. There is of course the dashboard API. That's really what you interact with when you interact with the Meraki front end dashboard. But now they want you to understand how we can interact with the Wi-Fi APIs, like the captive portal or the location scanning APIs, which is part of the SSIDs where we can track people as they move through our organization by tracking their cell phone. The MV Sense, which is our camera APIs, that's all a part of it. And then webhooks, how do we actually build alerts to receive webhook alerts? Another major part of it. Some of this content has already been covered on CBT Nuggets too. We do have sections on automating Meraki APIs, including the SDK. And I even have a skill called Deploy Python Function Apps in Azure. And that skill was all about receiving a Meraki webhook alert written in Python. Now these two here, these create a network, configure a network. This is the dashboard API, and that's absolutely what we do as part of the DevNet Associate course. And my code is also available on GitHub. So do you see now how this exam is a little bit different than the other automation exams we've been talking about, where they're just trying to get you familiar with API fundamentals and software development fundamentals? This exam is automating Cisco networks. That's what this exam is all about doing. And I really think you should check it out because one of the key things about it is it counts towards both DevNet professional and CCM professional. And even if you don't take those core exams, you still get the enterprise automation certification. Now, me personally, I am wrapping up recording Azure certification stuff for CBT Nuggets in the next couple of weeks. But what's up on my next to-do list? You bet I'm going straight into the in auto exam recording and I've got my Meraki equipment sitting right here on the floor beneath me so that I can lab and show you how to do things like this location scanning API and the MVSense API. It's gonna be a blast. So check out that in auto. I think it's gonna be the specialist exam that you should really go for that will separate you from the other crowd and it'll make you stand out on your resume by saying, I'm not only talking about the core CCNP and DevNet professional items, I'm actually going for the enterprise automation stuff that's setting up your enterprise for the future. So that's the in auto exam. Thanks for stopping by y'all. We'll see you in the next one.